Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. People are struggling with body fat and they struggle with weight loss, and it's a big topic. And I'll tell you, one of the topics that we get into in losing the body fat or finding ways to do it. Now, cortisol, this is what I want to hit on. There's so many aspects of weight loss that we can talk about, but one is cortisol. It's a stress hormone that's produced by the adrenals. And when cortisol levels are up in the body, and this happens due to poor diet, so if you eat a lot of processed foods, drink a lot of coffee, drink, eat a lot of sugar, you're going to raise cortisol levels all throughout the day. It's, it's a normal uh, part of the physiology of the body. When cortisol levels go up, Of course, your ability to store body fat around the midsection goes up, which is not a good thing. And, of course, you're going to decrease lean muscle tissue. That's not a good thing either. So getting to a place where you can manage your overall body system and you can get your body functioning at a better level, that's going to be an absolute key. So I want to encourage you to begin to focus on getting cortisol level. It's like cortisol management (laughs) would be a good topic. And the way to lower cortisol levels, you want to get plenty of rest. I would rest one full day a week. You can exercise five, six days a week if you want to, but just keep the duration of it lower. So the duration of your exercise routine should be around no more than about 45 minutes tops. And that's including cardio and weights. No matter how you mix and match it to really make an impact, you have to keep it at a low level you can't be maxing it out you've got to keep it at a a very low level so that should be a big focus now the other key too that is very important i think for for each person to follow with keeping cortisol levels low is is drinking plenty of green tea green tea has got it's just one of those superfoods the more i study green tea of course i drink it every day but the more i study it the more it's just like it seems like there's constantly new things that it does and it just helps our body in so so many different ways green tea actually helps lower cortisol levels and it's got it works like a component called phosphatidylserine and this substance with the big funny name phosphatidylserine can be quite helpful at supporting the body and making a big difference as far as cutting down the the cortisol levels so drinking just eight ounces uh, of green tea every single day can help lower cortisol levels so Again, if you're looking at dropping belly fat, that's a great way to go. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Also, if you're looking for a lifestyle provider, someone in your area that believes the same way we do, focuses on nutrition and lifestyle-based care, call the same number. If you're looking for a lifestyle provider, 888-283-7272, and we can get someone to help you right there in your area. All right, let's go now to Reba. Hi, Reba. When someone's taking medication that causes um, upper body fat and um, belly fat, are there any vitamins or anything that can be taken or that can, you know, decrease that or slow it down? Yeah, there there actually is. I mean, with, with body fat, you always want to think there's some basics that you always have to understand. And, and getting your body fat levels in check, knowing where they are, and managing that, it all comes down to the food that you take in, the kinds of foods, and the and the timing of the foods, too. For example, remember, carbohydrates increase insulin, and insulin is a storage hormone. So if you were to eat high levels of carbohydrates with a ton of fat, you're going to store more body fat. But if you eat maybe... If you eat fat with low amounts of carbohydrates, you're probably not going to store that much fat at all. And your body can actually utilize that fat in other ways. So timing of your nutrients, the way you eat your nutrients is all very helpful. And that's really what you want to focus on when you're looking at body fat levels. Now, I'll tell you some really quick tips that are very, very helpful uh, to look at, especially with body fat levels. One, I talk about green tea, and that's always a a big topic as far as cutting down cortisol levels, decreasing belly fat. And that's the one thing about green tea is it targets belly fat. But for the hips and the thighs, getting some blood testing done, I'm telling you, this is the key. There are three estrogens 
And if you understand any kind, anything about metabolism, if you if you can get your doctor to test all three estrogens, many times you can find the link of why your body is storing excess body fat. So the estrogens, you've got estrone, estradiol, and estriol. These three store body fat in different areas of the body. And so finding out which area that it's storing the different uh, types of body fat in, that is such a key component to figuring out this whole puzzle. And so that's what I would do. Get them to run that test, and then you'll be able to find out some really good information on what to do, especially with where the body fat's being deposited and how it's being deposited. That's a big key. 888 Let's go to Ellen. Hi, Ellen. They want to do a hip replacement on me. I'm, I turned 60 in January. Um, it's the left hip, and it's aggravating the, uh, what you call the uh, sciatic nerve in the back now, down my leg. Uh, I was thinking about having uh, or find a, a hospital or a place that uh, can rebuild your cartilage. You know, they they take in uh, cells or something like that and put it back in to rebuild. Is there anything like that going on? You know, I don't mind being a candidate for it. I just don't want the surgery. I'm with you. And, yeah, there is, there is pretty good research going on right now about, about the, the different chemicals and stem cells and how they're re, rebuilding a lot of the cartilage and whatnot for the joints. You might want to check out some of the research articles that are online. Some of the bigger hospitals and research groups, Cleveland Clinic, Mayo Clinic, are doing some research behind that. So check into that for sure. But your diet is going to be a big key. And I would get multiple opinions before you ever jump into a hip surgery. It's a pretty big surgery. And also look at dropping your weight. That's a big key first. Hopefully they talk to you about that. Puts another hour in the charts. I want to thank our producer, Jay Patrick, engineer, John Garrison, and the rest of the team. Go tell one person something you learned on this show. And together we can impact and transform the health of our lives, of our friends, our families, and our communities. To experience more of Asa Rx audio, visit us at asarx.com. Hi, it's Asa here. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Do you need a new prescription for your life? I have a special gift for all my listeners. I'm giving away a free copy of my international best-selling book to help you truly live your potential. All you have to do is cover the shipping and handling, and I will give you the book absolutely free. I want to invest in you and your health this year. So get your free copy of my book by visiting myfreehealthbook.com. That's myfreehealthbook.com, and let's get healthy together this year.